I'm reinventing myself. I'm me and nobody else. Ooh, I can't help but smile. Hello everybody and welcome to another one of these things. Today I'm in the Greek town area of Toronto or otherwise known as the Danforth to the locals because it's on Danforth Avenue. A lot of cool local landmarks around here like the uh, Square Boy Burger Place there across the street. Never actually ate there, might be something I want to do someday. Uh, today we'll be shooting with the 70-300 Tamron, kind of an odd choice for street photography but we'll see how it goes. I like to think that the center of Greek town is at the corner of Danforth and Pape and the reason why is this huge church in the background called Church of the Holy Name. It's by an architect called Arthur Holmes. Researching for this video I just realized why it looks so familiar to me and it's because he modeled it after the Basilica de Santa Maria Maggiore in Rome. Just across the street from the Basilica in Rome was my favorite place to get chocolate croissants when I was in Rome. There's something called Taste of the Danforth every year and it showcases all the different food on the Danforth which is way more than Greek food, way more than pizza too, just like anything you can think of you can find that food on the Danforth. There were a lot of interesting people to photograph as usual. There was actually a girl who approached me to take a photo. I really liked her style. Hopefully she reaches out to me. I'd love to get this to her. Somebody else with some great style is this motorcyclist. I didn't realize until I was home looking at these that she had these cool gloves on too, the leopard print on them. These shoes! There are a lot of cool bikes as usual. A lot of cool cars too. Man after my own heart with the vintage Benz. And something that pops up every once in a while is, um, is Vespa's. It would have been nice to have a shallower depth of field in this one. This one's not too bad because uh, the backdrop looks good. On a side note, this was with my A7C. I really like shooting cars with this lens. With extension tubes and a Raynox diopter, you could even do this. This was shot with my FX30, believe it or not. Okay, back to the damn fourth. Always under construction, as people in the city would know. This is the landmark that comes to the minds of most when thinking about the Danforth. It's Danforth Music Hall. Lots of famous acts have played here. Factory Girl is a very popular place to hang out on the Danforth and one of my favorites too. The Only Cafe, also a very cool place to hang out. So many cool places to hang out. These guys hemming it up for the camera were crossing the Prince Edward Viaduct or locally known as the Bloor Street Viaduct, which marks the end of Bloor Street and the beginning of the Danforth. It crosses over the Don Valley Parkway. Uh, movie fans, those of the Resident Evil franchise, will recognize it as the Ravenscape Bridge. Unfortunately, it's got a very real history as being a popular place to commit suicide from, or it did. A suicide prevention rail was erected. You can see the rods uh, of the veil here on the right hand side. The rods have prevented all but one suicide since. Over 400 people have taken their lives jumping from the Bloor Street Viaduct. They used to have phones at either end that accompanied these signs. An outspoken advocate for erecting the veil was a guy named Al Burney. Those affected by deaths from the viaduct will often touch his plaque. You can see that's why it's a bit worn out here on the left hand side. This shot here sort of illustrates the power of that 450 mil reach. I shot this at 4K 120 with my FX30 at the full 450 mil at my parents' house. I thought I would include this because I haven't included a lot of video here. This little guy, so cute. Hello my good people, here we are again. I'm gonna preface this whole part of the video by saying I'm not a fan of zoom lenses, I'm just not. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a fast prime kind of guy. Um, I used to own the 17-70 to when I owned my A7 III 
and uh, from Tamron, the, the, the very popular 17 to 70 with the constant f2.8. I got rid of that almost immediately and I, and I bought it from someone with the intention they were going to sell it right away uh, because at the time it was very hard to get hands on it and uh, this person knew that there's going to be a massive demand for it so of course I paid a premium. The lens lasted all of probably three weeks with me and then I'm like I I want to go back to my primes. <laughs> I ended up doing actually pretty well selling that because it was still very difficult to get a hold of when I did get rid of it. It's at the telephoto end of things that I'm usually buying a zoom lens and that's of course where this falls. Uh, and, and that's for the wildlife stuff when we're traveling. I had this with us in Iceland and it was on my a7C um, and getting shots of like the very skittish uh, sheep <laughs> and the horses and uh, and you know all the other wildlife uh, that we saw in Iceland was amazing. And I had an, an equivalent lens. Uh, it was the Sony G lens. I actually did a video about how I traded my G lens for this. I shot with the G lens with my A7 III in Costa Rica. That was actually a very popular video. I guess a lot of people were curious as to why I was getting rid of that lens in favor of this. As far as my eye can see, this lens is just as sharp as that lens. And it's, a, it's like half the weight and I don't see any alternative to this lens right now uh, for, for what I want. If you look at APS-C specific lenses that are available right now and you're looking for something light and compact with this um, with this reach now this is a 450 equivalent on an APS-C sensor there aren't too many uh, alternatives to that like none that I would uh, entertain. We've got the super zoom now but it's much heavier than this and I don't need a super zoom because when I'm going with the wider focal lengths, I'm, I'm not wanting um, to shoot that slow. I, I don't even see myself buying the Sigma uh, 18 to 50 because I'm not sure if I can stomach the f2.8. <laughs> I mean that that's basically what happened to me when I bought that Tamron those are fantastic lenses and and that was me shooting with the 70 to 70 on full frame so I was still able to throw out the backgrounds a fair bit uh, so this brings me to those challenges that I had yesterday when I was shooting on the Danforth with this I you know love to be able to get that subject separation for what this lens is it's fantastic and I was uh, really pretty pleased with the results and and I knew I would be you know I've had like I said I've had years of experience now with this lens it's it's amazing and I still can't see myself trading it in for for anything really what made yesterday even more difficult was the fact that I just came from weeks of shooting with that beautiful 75 1.2 from Viltrox that that thing will knock out any any background in almost any situation right it, and and the luxury of being able to do that of course comes at a cost it's a very heavy lens and that's why I wouldn't travel with it um, and uh, it's it's why I'm not worried about um, my portrait lens being heavy anymore because I just don't find that I even take my portrait lenses out of my bag when we're traveling so that that's not going to be coming with us the next time we go on a trip but this Oh yes, this is definitely coming along. So those of you who are shooting on APS-C who are looking for the ultimate and a lightweight travel setup, I would recommend that you check out the Sigma 18 to 50. That's a constant f2.8 and pairing it together with this. Now I haven't heard anybody saying that you should pair these two lenses together, but this is my take. If you look at how uh, much reach you're getting out of this and how light it is, regardless of whether it's full frame, this is as light as you can go. And you put that together with the APS-C specific 18 to 50, and I think that's an amazing combination for travel, uh, working between these two lenses. If you don't wanna be switching out your lenses and you wanna keep your kit as light as possible. Myself, personally, I'm probably going to stay away from the 18 to 50, just because I love my prime so much. 
Uh, one of the primes that I might get rid of though, and this is gonna probably shock some people, is my 16 mil Sigma. The one that I shoot with when I'm out on the street. Well, I shoot myself. Uh, with it when I'm out on the street because I like my camera close enough to me that if someone's walking by they can't steal it. <laughs> Toronto's a very safe city but I don't want my camera too far away from me. And also like the fact it's a little bit wider, I get a little bit more context, you know, so you guys can actually see where I'm standing. That's cool with the Sigma as well. But Sony's got their alternative and that's the 15mm G lens and that lens as far as autofocus goes is a much newer lens. It's just way lighter. Uh, it, it's a fortune comparatively to what you can get the Sigma for, especially used. Uh, and, and that would make my kit a lot uh, lighter. But um, I, I, I still think that the lightest um, setup for an APS-C shooter is that um, 18 to 50 from Sigma and this right here. So as usual, I hope you all got something out of this one. If so, please consider leaving me a thumbs up. If not, that's okay too. If you've got any ideas for future episodes, please leave those in the comments below. If uh, you wanna make sure you don't miss any of these, um, uh, consider subscribing and turning your notifications on. Until next time, keep working to make your chosen idea a reality. Peace.